Yes, you are listening to uh, the uh, Perfect Pop Coast Weekly Podcast. I am Jordan Thomas, and now it's time for a coffee and a chat with Thomas and Tom from The Erotic Secrets of Pompeii. Perfect Pop Podcast. Okay, so uh, coffee and a chat time, of course, sponsored by Madhouse uh, Coffee. Go to madhousetattoo.co.uk slash madhousecoffee for your beans. Uh, but one band, <laughs> I was just I was just looking at their, their merch page, and uh, they, they've got a, uh, a tea towel of ecstatic doom in with their merch, which I find absolutely uh, marvellous. Um, it's a band that uh, Andreas and the Wolf um, did a gig with the other week. It's Erotic Secrets of Pompeii. Hello, Thomas, and hello, Tom, from the band. How hello. are you doing? Good. Yeah? Very good. Oh, that's all. That's all marvelous. We've got the, we've got the post tour highs. I think we're we're yeah. do, just finished our tour a couple of weeks back, and yeah, we're buzzing. So I've just got to ask. I mean, the the name "Erotic Secrets of Pompeii." I mean, it's not. It's quite specific. Uh, what, who came up with the name? What does it? Uh, what does it mean? It's got to signify something. Uh, I wrote the name. Um, the story is basically. Uh, we've all been in bands since our kind of teenage years, or like yeah. independent different bands and things. And uh, I've been in many bands, and obviously one of the most exciting things about being in a band is picking the band name. That's mm-hmm. the, the best part. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, so in between bands and even in bands, I used to collate names and names and ideas of other band names and things like that. And this is one that was on a list and came up time and time again as, as being something quite interesting and couldn't f- quite find the right project for it. Yeah. And it seemed to fit this one because... Um, not only it, it doesn't take itself seriously as a name, but at the same time, it's about um, a horrible um, mass death. You know, at least it kind of yeah, um, yeah. references that. But it references sex, it references death, and it kind of it's a little bit uh, bombastic. Um, it's it kind of is what we are and it kind of makes sense for what we do. Uh, and it originally comes from a, the title of a book that my granddad gave me. So oh, really? it was called... Pompeii, the erotic secrets, and it was all yeah. about the t- the different tiles and the different. Um, they were very salacious, and it kind of it was a nice tie-in of the two, the juxtaposition of that kind of thing. People kind of look at it, and they're either they double take at it, and they kind of they click, and it's been great kind of marketing for us, and it's <laughs> something that's easily searchable online. Um, and at the same time, I think at first people think it's kind of silly, but then a bit like maybe the Arctic Monkeys over time people just mm. kind of that's sort of the thing really these days isn't it because uh, i remember i mean this was you know going back uh, going back to when i lived in london uh, uh, i was walking past the purple turtle in camden one night and i i just read the the poster that was there and there were some bands band names that you just um that would just completely you just gloss over but the ones that did actually stand out were well, those slightly more unusual ones you know which i suppose you know fits your 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 idea of of this perfectly really doesn't it yeah yeah when we got together um it was quite kind of trendy to have a band name with one word in it mm. um and then before that it was always just something and yeah. i think we kind of didn't want to do that because what why zig when you can zag kind of well, thing, exactly. like, yeah 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 so i mean what's the oh sorry, sorry sorry tom you were just about to say something i cut you off dead so what what, what would you like to say <laughs> well all i was gonna say is why zig tom said why zig when you can zag and i was I just said that um it's very much the approach we take to writing as well <laughs> it's something that yeah. we embody in our in our music and our in our videos and stuff as well i think so it's, it's quite a good the name is quite a good indicator of, of what we're about i think for on many levels you can't see this dear listener but uh i i am looking at, uh, at tom and he is in a in a, a room that i i would um I would relish. I mean, it's it's full of of musical instruments and everything um, in there. I mean, that's it's absolutely. Perfect. Is that is that your 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 band's workspace? Yeah. So this is my this is in my house. This is uh, my basement studio that yeah. we convert from a concrete hole in our Georgian house. So <laughs> before we lived here, I used to run a studio in mm. Clifton in Bristol, Old Portishead, a massive attack studio. Mm. When I moved out of that building, the owner of the building was renovating it and turning it into his sort of luxury pad and I, all of the um all of the sort of acoustic treatment stuff so all of the wood wooden paneling and stuff here came out of that studio oh uh, excellent so all of that paneling recorded blue lines by massive attack and dummy by port's head and uh things like that so like you're real- you're literally s- sitting sitting amongst the the physical fabric of some seminal work there really it's, aren't it's you in these walls yeah very much so and so um uh the with erotic secrets we we do 
when we, when we record, so we've just we've just finished some recording. Uh, we use a studio in Bristol called Hum Studio to do like the drums and the and the big band stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we'll bring it back here. I'll sort of pull it all apart and put it back together again, and then we'll do overdubs and stuff, and I'll mix here. Um, so it's very yeah, it's a very useful space to have. Yeah, sure. I mean that that sort of that sort of thing. When when you are a band that has that sort of um, those sort of facilities at your at your disposal, it's they're worth their weight in gold, really, aren't they? Yeah, it, it really is because otherwise we'd just be waiting on and paying somebody else to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the most important thing: the paying someone else when you can actually do it yourself. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it's it's it, you know it does help us along. I think being able to produce our own stuff. Yeah. I suppose that you you've kind of got to sort of strike a, a balance here, haven't you? About uh, when it does, you do come down to the, you know the, the home recording, the setups that you've got to sort of put a strike a balance between doing everything in the box and doing things where they are actually analog. Um, I'm just looking down at your pedal board um, down there, and the you know the fact you've actually got a physical piano in in, in the studio as well. I mean th- those things are th- those you can't you can't quite replicate the sound sometimes, can you? No, no, I've got, I'll see if I can show you. I've got a console here on my wall there. Oh, you have like... to describe it for the listeners. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, 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 this, uh, this is, <laughs> this is radio stuff. Hidden behind there, uh, what was that? Some kind of WWE uh, figure? Yeah, it's one little WWE <laughs> figure, yeah. So, Who's that? Is that Edge? Yeah, he's actually, uh, yeah, fittingly, he's lying on um, a stack of reel-to-reel tape. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, I'd, I mean, that's a, you can coexist. The, the analog and digital can coexist, and uh, I think it's unrealistic to say that they can't because it does bring a massive level of convenience being able to do stuff on a computer. But we are very much a band that likes to capture a sound in a room and mm. then feel like when the record emerges, you're listening to that performance. Yes. It, even if it's in a slightly in a slightly diluted way in that you know the performance forms the the basis of the song and you've added some additional stuff on top um you want to feel like that is a performance and it's not just a series of multi multi tracks that that have been layered upon each other and you know i think it feels like with that level of perfection you lose a certain amount of character and personality which um uh, a great a great example actually is that last when so when we recorded our album um last year we we put again performed it all live in the studio so the aim of that was to make sure we got drums bass guitar and um some synth all playing together so that that could form the basis of the of the record and while we were doing that we had tom in the tom and i were in the same room uh, in the control room with the console because I was manning the console. The other guys were in the live room playing. We could look at each other through the window. Mm-hmm. We had Tom set up with what we thought would be a guide vocal station where he would just be doing guide vocals. But the performances were so good that probably about 80% of those guide vocals <laughs> are like the vocals we used on the record because it captured that um, that like raw enthusiasm, like you know, yeah, we're in the so studio, we're making something. The initial and... excitement, sort of thing. Well, well Pr- Prince used to work exactly the same way, didn't he? Because he used to do all his vocals literally sitting at at the mixing console on an SM57. You know, that was his uh, his and thing. And it's like there's something so nice about just you can hear that excitement in it, and it like it infuses itself amongst the rest of the music. And I think it's very easy if you if you take. You know, you take the instrumental and you come down to the studio like, right, let's let's re-record all the lead vocals, and you end up doing them fifteen times, and then by the end of it, you've got something that is maybe, mm. you know, note for note, bang on pitch, but then you lose all of the, all of the aggression and the excitement, and I think that's 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 as important, if not more, to us than like being technically bang on exactly I, I, you know i think i think the some of the greatest records that have ever been put out have got um what would be otherwise classed as mistakes on them yeah. but of course the, the mistake then becomes you know the imperfection becomes the perfection then doesn't it um i mean i just want to sort of just just sort of take this then across to your, your live your live performance i mean i'm going to hold my hands up and say i was not i was not there but uh, you know other other members of the popco certainly were um but you know you you're saying about you, you do doing your you wanted to capture capture the moment the, the live moments in your in your recording i mean the live show is a big part of part of what you do isn't it i mean you know thomas so i'm just looking at you now and you know your hair is perfectly coiffured and uh, 
you know, you've got your leopard skin. Is it? It is a leopard. Is leopard skin a tiger print? What? I'm not. Yeah, ti- yeah, a bit yeah, of both, really. Everything. <laughs> I don't yeah. know quite what it is. It's like a woolly kimono that I've had for years and years. Yeah. I got it from a charity shop. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean you're still dressing up at home? You know. I mean that's uh, you know. That's <laughs> but the the excitement has got it's got to be there because like I said, it's a rocket erotic secret. So it's it's a big part of what you of what you do, isn't it? Especially on stage. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I think, like Tom was saying, um, when we're recording, it's all of us in a room together. Um, do it well, apart from me, to, well, outside in the kind of uh, control room, but still doing it in that, you know, doing so many takes. And then this time we learned from last time, and it was like, right, rather than me doing one uh, kind of vocal guide take, how about I do like a few <laughs> versions of it? So then at least we can kind of. Um, yeah, pick and choose the bits that kind of work so um, yeah it was good it was really good and I even when we were recording I was dressing up and I was dressing up for the different songs in, in, in like different suits brought different things to try and in, in imbue different kind of characters that, that's the kind thing of isn't it kind of characteristics it's theater isn't it i mean and if you well, yeah. if you if you feel like um i was watching i was watching a, an interview about something completely different to this it was about uh, about star trek so i'm a massive nerd right so uh, you know and and they were say some of the actors were saying they would the they'd never watched star trek before in the whole of their lives um and then the minute that they got into makeup and if they were playing an alien or whatever, and they suddenly realised that they became the character. But it wasn't mm. until they they actually put the makeup on, looked at themselves in the mirror and went, oh, I get it now. And I yeah, suppose yeah, that's yeah. very much in the same process as what you were doing. If you're saying, you know, you, you're dressing up to actually do the song as as you, as you need to, as you envisioned it in your head. Yeah, when I was there, I mean, when we perform live, I put a bit of makeup on, like the kind of the coal eyes and, and black yeah. lipstick is the current look. And that is like war paint, isn't it? You put it on and you kind of imbue this kind of um, the stage persona, um, which is great. You've just finished one tour now. What's sort of the next, the next step? Um, for the rest of 2024. Are you doing any festivals this year? Yes, we are. Um, they've not been announced yet. Mm. <laughs> well, what, say yeah. what you can. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, yeah. if you find signs uh, of any NDAs, I don't want them going, hang on a second. So, well, so, um, we are playing an all day on the 29th of June in London, Haggerston, which is it's, oh, cool. uh, the signature brew in right. Haggerston. Yeah. Um, and it is with Lock, it's kind of a special event that they're doing with Lockjaw Records. Right. Um, so it's like an all day, there's about 10, 11 bands playing. Um, I think quite a punky kind of hardcore kind of day. Um, we're bringing a bit of the glam to it, I think. Cool. <laughs> I but it's it's also a vinyl fair at the same time. So they've yeah. got vinyl fair, they're going to have kind of real music nerds there. Um and we we think we're going to have a blast there. Um, well, just just, like, just saying about the vinyl stuff. I mean, you, you're you've got a you've got a red vinyl out, uh, which um, you know it's, I'm 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 looking at it right now, and it's very sexy. I mean, it's <laughs> but that's that's the sort of thing because vinyl is kind of back now. It's not really enough to to do just oh well, we're going to do a black disc and you know that's it. It's got to it's got to give a little bit more really now, hasn't it? Yeah, and we call ourselves an art rock band, uh, you know, based on the kind of history of art rock, like David Bowie, uh, Peter Gabriel, Robert Underground, all of that, people yeah. that kind of look at other mediums uh, and take the influence. Where you can see all the books behind me, like, reading, reading, reading. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Well, one of you sitting in a studio, the other one sitting in a library. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think you can't really call yourself an art rock band if you're not willing to then... Stre- show that in your merch and, and kind of yeah. show that in other ways than just the music uh, and that is why we kind of the the the, the kind of the, the merch the live show the the videos as Tom was saying the music everything is kind of is one whole entity uh, it is one whole thing and it and it oh, oh, you know, it, yeah it's theatrical and that, that's put some people off in the past that term I think they see it as a kind of a, a bad term but I think people forget that the, the term art comes from the term you know, the term artifice and art comes from the same thing. Hmm. Art is it, you're, you're portraying something, um, and we we have fun with it, but it feels authentic, especially for myself to be putting on the kind of what I'm putting on, and hmm. for us to be making this kind of music. It's it's coming from an authentic place, and we're getting to kind of scratch an itch that's a little bit kind of sometimes camp, sometimes scary. 
um, always exciting. Yeah, hopefully. And of course, you know, you 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 are a Bristol-based band as well, aren't you? I've always thought of Bristol as a very bohemian place, especially within the last the last thirty years. So you know, there, there's so much of 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 that area that I guess that you're you're channeling as well, right? None of us are Bristol. Um, what's the word? Um, born and bred. Yeah. We've all moved here, and the reason I moved here, but possibly some of the other guys, is because of the scene, mm-hmm. is because of the music, because of the art, because of the theatre, because of that. So. 100 percent if if Bristol didn't have that then we wouldn't be around so that is kind of part of us i'd say and the music scene is great here we've, we've got some great friends in the music scene here um there's some really good stuff going on noisy stuff softer stuff yeah um uh in our sort of first year or so we did you know we made use of the fact that there were a lot of grassroots grassroots venues in bristol we don't actually play in bristol that much at the moment hmm. uh we, we actually t- we tend to find ourselves playing more far more out of bristol than we do in bristol um but it is it is a very nurturing place full of intrepid gig goers who sort of like to feel like they're discovering something new there there's there's quite an open-minded community i think bristol yeah um which um i feel like isn't the case in all cities in the uk i think no <laughs> <laughs> naming no names <laughs> but uh, but yeah i mean i i think the um i think what, what the thing that ca- can be said for for bristol though is that it's it's a bit of a hackney term these days isn't it to say the word safe space or the term safe space but it is it is a a safe space for for artists to to kind of throw things out the wall and just see what sticks and there's less being as part of the accepted scene within the area and you've got to have a certain look to be to play the gig otherwise you're it's you know completely off limits to you yeah yeah that, that i think is definitely true and there's there's so much going on here there are so many different scenes that i think the level of fragmentation means that there is maybe not not a massive amount of snobbery because there's mm. there's so many different things happening all the time that you, you know you've almost got to be accepting to exist <laughs> uh so well, i mean what, what what's what's um what, what's your next move now after after you've done all your plans what's the next the next big thing that you're you're kind of working towards now so we have um we're we both we both <laughs> what can we say what can we say so <laughs> finish this tour which has been like phenomenal really really good we've got a, a few uh, festival dates coming up um uh, a couple of big ones up in the um ones in the east midlands and ones up in the north i can that's as, as much as i can tell you <laughs> at the minute um and then we've got i mean i don't even think i should be telling you this but we've got uh, uh some european dates oh, in the works excellent so nothing to be official as of yet but in yeah. october we, we we're going out to hopefully france germany italy at the moment brilliant um so that is kind of in the works. Mm-hmm. I've probably said too much. I could see. Oh, it's it. I'm fucking agents going to be on the phone. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, it's all right. You haven't named uh, names, so you know it's not like you know <laughs> they're going to be there at this date, and it's not happening. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so we're kind of working on yeah. something to go to Europe because um, every time we play somewhere, people come up to us at the end, and it's not everywhere, but you know, a lot of the places, yeah. people come up and go, "You guys go go down great in Europe because of because they enjoy the kind of the dressing up the." Mm. The kind of uh, extreme theatre kind of thing that we're doing. Also in the works, we've got, uh, as Tom mentioned, we're working on some new material. So we're kind of coming up with the the next kind of stage for the band, um, introducing some different instrumenta- in, instrumentation on the recordings. Um, the, the, the the songs we've worked on, we've, we've played a couple of them live already. Uh, one in particular on tour that's got gone down really well. Um, they're all kind of different beasts. They're all kind of really different, really exciting kind of things, for, exciting for us anyway. Yeah. Um, and as of as soon as we say goodbye to you, Jordan, myself and Tom have got a meeting to talk about the ne- the music video that we're going to be doing. So that's all it's, happening then. It's, yeah, yeah, it's constant and it's exciting and it's you know. It's cool. um, yeah. w- we love it. We love it. It's, it's hard work, but if it wasn't, then... It's, yeah, exactly. It, it wouldn't be... Yeah, it, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to chat to you. Um, what song out of your catalogue uh, do we, do you want to end with? Uh, uh, oh, the, the, wheel, the Wheel. You want to, what do you, are you happy to go? Are you, are you happy? 
The wheel, the spade, the stars in motion, please. All right, then. Cool. Thank you very much indeed. Of course, if you want to go and find out anything more about them, it's really easy to just to Google erotic secrets of Pompeii. And you don't even get the book. You just literally get you. So, you know, it's not like you get the Amazon link. It's like, oh, well, actually, there's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because normally I'd say, oh, well, what's your Twitter handle and that sort of stuff? It's just like Google Erotic Secrets of Pompeii. And it's like, there you are. Done. One page. Yes, Yes, Google works well in that. (laughs) Our SEO has pushed that down a little bit. Yes. You're going to be getting a letter just going, excuse me, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Guys, absolute pleasure. Cheers, Jordan. Thanks a lot. Take care.